take action. Because if I can do it, I promise you any of you can do it. There's no question about that. If you want your present to be better, your future has to be bigger. What is up, Honey Badger Nation? Happy Freedom Day. Hope you guys had a Happy birthday, weekend. America. How's, uh, how's Mr. Albie? Man, I'm doing great. Just uh, celebrated all weekend. Got to hang out with Mr. Gadosh in Lockengren. He put on an absolutely amazing display of fireworks. <laughs> um it was so cool because Courtney had never been to his lake house. And as you pull into Lake Lock and Grin, doesn't, there's two entrances. It doesn't matter which one you come into. You just see this huge, I want to say, 15 foot wide by eight foot tall sign, you know, that says, you know, fire everything that's going on for the week. I mean, he just does it right. And it, Andrew Gadosh. And, and so we get through the gate, making our way to his house. And I'm not kidding. Courtney was like, oh, there's a, there's a, there's a sign with Andrew's face on it. Oh, there's another one. As we, we made our way down, we, we hit like, we saw like six for sale or sold signs with his face on it. And, uh, it's all, it's, it never gets old. It's always impressive to me. So it was, it was a fun weekend. Then we, uh, we ended it with little Dusty Black and Gary LaVox up in, uh, Columbus, up in Dublin, Ohio. And uh, they lit it up so good. So uh, it was great, man. How about you? It was good, man. You know, got to uh, – we had kitchen table last week. So, you know, always need that recharge and rewind, uh, just kind of unwind a little bit. And uh, got got a little bit of that. I know we, um, you know, on the on the go, had a, had a little bit of training to do. Got some pool time. Got to hang out at uh, – up at the, up at Gallardia, they put on a hell of a fireworks display. I've never seen that many people there, and and so you know, we're out on the driving range, um, and they shoot the fireworks from the driving range. Well, these fireworks you can sit anywhere in Oklahoma City and watch it, right? So like it's so loud and like the lights are so bright. My eyes were watering is how bright the fireworks and everything were. So Zane and I kind of time it to where we can get out of there before, you know, everybody, like we're going to be stuck there for, for at least 30, 45 minutes trying to get out. So we time in, like we were the first ones out Well, we come out of the gate and um, we stood there before we got in the truck and we watched the, the finale. And so we jet darted out, got out through the gate. And as soon as we hit the main road, I'm not shitting you thousands of cars. So, just like there's big church, there's there's a bunch of big church parking lots and stuff all the way around it. So um, what happened? Just so everybody just comes there and they watch, right? You, I mean, you got to be a member, you know, to get in to get in through the gate. And I was just I was blown away at how many cars. I was like, oh my gosh, it's incredible. But it was it was cool. So we had uh, we had a good time. We had a little bit of that country club life over the weekend. You, what up, cuz? You probably. You probably you probably saved yourself closer to two, two and a half hours uh, <laughs> and getting out of there uh, versus 45. We did the same thing last night. We didn't, we didn't stay for the fireworks after uh, Gary LaVox, but um, got out of there. That's, that's how honey badgers do it. We get, we get in, we get out. What's, What's up, Jake? What's happening, man? That's funny. I, I think I know what y'all are talking about. Cause we got, we got, we got caught up in, uh, in one of those, um, Everybody's going this way. We're going somewhere else last night. <laughs> to get out of the fireworks show here in, in uh, Frisco. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was telling them about uh, they did, you know, Gallardia puts on a show, and it's on the driving range. Well, they let all the members come sit up on the on the area, right? And, of course, it's cool because, you know, they've got the music theme to it. Music's blaring. Um, it's just It's just really cool. And I was like, I, was look, I looked at Zane, and, like, he was all cuddled up because, you know, it was so loud for him. I was like. We're gonna make we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pull a honey badger move. We're gonna get out here quick. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Hey, I, I could tie something in here as a as a cool lesson that I thought of. So 
I don't know when you came on, Jay, but we were talking about Gadosh's, uh, you know, firework display and, you know, everything that he just does in that lake community to just own it, right? Yep. So Courtney had never been to his lake before. And as we came in, she saw like six signs from the time that we got into the gate of Lock and Grin to his house, at least six for sale or sold signs, right? Yep. And the fireworks display that he put on was just second to none. So the next day we went to Danielle and Scott's Lake. It's about an hour away. And it was their their lake had their fireworks on Sunday. So we we you know we 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 timed it all perfectly. And the fireworks at their lake is put on by two real estate agents. I think they're um I don't I don't even know if they're Keller or another brand. I can and, and the problem is I don't know their brand. And that's the yeah. lesson. Okay? So like it was so funny because I, we were coming into their lake, and, and I'm like, Danielle told me, she's like, yeah, these two realtors, um, and she said their names and everything like that, they're putting on the fireworks tonight, and as we were going to their house, I didn't see one. I saw all these other real estate signs, not one of theirs, and sure enough, we're on the boat. They do the grand finale, and I swear it lasted maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds tops, it was done. We're all in the boat, we're looking. First thing out of my mouth is I said, they need to join us and show we'll show, show them how to sell a few more houses and get a better fireworks show. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that their, their fireworks show probably uh, matches their, their production somehow. But now, another story, right. they need some rev share. Yeah. <laughs> they need some rev share to pump them numbers up a bit. <laughs> they, learn, they can learn a thing or two. Yeah. Looks like we dropped, kitchen's dropped off. Yeah. I'll yeah, be right back. Johnny. Yeah, last night was. Um, oh, he said he'd be right back. Cool. So it looks like James. Uh, I just did a call for James for somebody uh, for you this morning, actually. Who was it? Um, had a couple calls, man. I had, a, I had a really good call. I just got off of Trent Dunn. So I just talked to Trent. Um, good dude. Um, definitely got the right approach. We made a couple tweaks to his funnel. Um, in the process, that I think will help. But I just got off a call with this dude that um, you know, he's, he's uh, you know he he struggled in the business first five five months. Um, you know he didn't sell anything. His second year he really gassed it up. Did fifty four transactions, and uh, his business is. And I think a lot of people will, will um, recognize this. This is like this is the place where most people would come to us for coaching. Was you know you're doing fifty deals, you know thirty, forty, fifty deals but they're all coming to him by referral and, you know, and repeat. And it's, he, he said, my, the, my feeling is I don't, I, I don't feel, you know, real confident, you know, where my business is going to come from. Right. And I said, well, you know, it's great that you got, you know, your business is hundred percent by referral, but you'll never get to the next level until, you know, two things will have to happen. Number one, you're going to have to delegate some things. And the second thing is you're going to have to focus on the listing side of the business and you're going to need to be able to, you know, build an oil well, a, a pillar where you're spending X amount of dollars a month to consistently drive two to three deals per month and, you know, consistently in your business. I said, once you have that confidence, you know, it, and it kind of levels things out and your ups and downs aren't as big, you know, then, you know, then you can move to that next level. But, you know, until and unless you have a pillar where you're spending a little bit of money, getting a return on investment, consistently getting business from, you know, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to, you know, and, and, and he was super coachable. It was a great, it was, it was a, it was a fun call. I could have talked to this kid for an hour um, longer because he was absorbing the fact that he just didn't have clarity and he was looking for clarity and he's looking for that decision-making process and he doesn't have it, right? Like if you don't have a framework for how you're deciding what your move is and you don't even know strategically what your next move should be, you don't really know, you know, it, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of guessing and spending money on things that don't work and, and um, and so yeah. Anyways, it was it was a, it was a fun conversation. But I think most most agents, when they get to the stage where they can spend a little bit of money in marketing and and get a couple of transactions consistently every month, that's where you know that's where the game really changes. But most agents also don't know that that's a different clientele that doesn't already know, like, and trust you. Didn't get not a warm referral, and so you have to you know improve your skill set at the same time um, in order to to be able to do that. But anyways, it was a fun conversation uh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that's been kind of the theme so you and I have been actually, talking about. That, that, that makes... <laughs> Got Al coming in and out with us on the I'm internet sorry, there. 
uh, the connection. I was just going to say, and, and I'll add Uh-oh. to it, I was just going to say, you know, we've been talking about <clears throat> in the last few conversations, really, it's so important right now to make sure that you've got good decision making filters in place. And if not, you know, in, in times of, of kind of change, I mean, you're going to get caught going one, one way or the other, you're going to, you know, follow the shiny object instead of knowing, you know, foundationally what is, what is critical and, and what's going to move you closer to where you want to be and not yep. make a decision that's going to move you further away. Right. Yep. Go ahead, Al. Am I coming in a little better now? Yeah. Am I coming in a little better now? Yeah. So, it, yeah, so John, oh, it's a great point, and that actually leads in also to what I was going to say. So, Jay Kinder, gun to head, you're doing – you're an agent right now in Dallas or Oklahoma City, wherever, wherever we want to pretend you're at, and you're doing – you know, 40 deals, maybe 50, you're making a couple hundred grand a year, something like that. And we know we got a crystal ball this time. We see what's coming. It's coming. Yep. And, uh, what, what would you do? You, your, your revenue share just went to zero. You have no income coming in except for the 200,000 you're making in sales right now. What do you do with the extra? Let's say you got, I don't know, $3,000 a month budget. Five, yeah. I don't know want to say five, but three, let's say three, three is probably, I think you yeah. can bust out 40,000. What do you doing? Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, so there's, um, you know, the, 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 let me give the framework for how I think about this. Cause I actually just had, I just helped was helping Kevin Anderson. Who's probably listening with this, uh, conversation just last night, yesterday. Um, you know, the, the thing that I would, you know, what it boils down to is you, you you, you want to start moving in a direction where a certain subset of the market sees you everywhere and starts to, to think of you first in the topic of real estate, which means you're consistently um, touching them and one mechanism or another, whether it's direct mail, social media, uh, you know, whatever that mechanism might be, the, all the different ways, mediums and channels that you can you can use. But there's a subset of, of the marketplace, like like with the example with Gadosh. And that and he is the incredible Hulk jumping up and down in a puddle, literally. Right. Everybody in that marketplace knows who Andrew Gadosh is. He dominates it. Right. Better than anyone. But that can be any niche. It can be um, that's a niche. That's a geographic niche. Uh, it's it's waterfront. That's a niche. Um, but it could be anything. Right. It could be any 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 you know audience that you can that you can build, that you can that can see you consistently and see you as the go to expert for that specific thing that, you know, that's them, whether it's the, you know, the neighborhood or it's um, golf course homes or it's move up buyers or move down buyers, whatever, you know, whatever that niche is. And so with that $3,000, my, my only goal is to build an audience of people that, that I build trust with by being professionally relevant and personally relevant to them. Um, and so I, for me, the, the easy answer for me on this one is, is YouTube um, because you can, you know, you can, you can build something that consistently drives, builds trust and it compounds over time. The number of views and the people I, 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 I did a search here. I mean, I'm still looking, you know, in Frisco and trying to figure out where I'm going to buy. So what do, you, what do you think the first thing I searched was PGA golf course homes for sale and new construction specifically, because I know that they're building new houses over there. So what do you think I found? I found a channel and I watched three videos of this one agent just educating me on everything there was to know about that golf course, all the homes, all the neighborhoods, all that information. It's all public out there, but I couldn't surf into it and see it in any real digestible way. But this agent put together one hell of a channel and I watched, you know, three videos in a row. So I've been, I've now spent an hour and a half with her. And if I wasn't my own real estate agent and I still might reach out to her because I think she has more knowledge than me about it. Um, that, you know, you know, that built a ton of trust, and if I was going to reach out to any one agent, I would reach out to her. And who do you think I would buy from? I would buy from her. I would I would literally be a preconditioned, ready to do business person for for her for her. And she just all she did was did the work, shot the videos, put that out there. And over time, she probably shot those videos six months a year ago. And now here I am looking specifically for that. And and 
that's going to result in inbound calls for people that want to do business with her. And so that's what I would do because I don't think that, you know, even if you use a done for you process, like, you know, give, give it a, another plug to Levi Lassick and Travis Plum and those guys, the real agents, um, you know, that's, that to me is um, going to create more leverage than any other activity I could do at a lower cost. And so that's where I, that's where I would, you know, gun to head, and I, I got so excited about it with Kevin. I was like, dude, we're doing this. I don't give a damn. I don't, I don't, I'm not here to do the videos, but he should do that for all the lake, you know, all the, you know, all the different, you know, neighborhoods around the lake. You don't, you don't know what school districts are with what you can't really tell if you're looking around the lake and you think you want to live on the water. That's, that's the kind of person that Kevin's going to get along with really well. Mm -hmm. And, and he's going to be able to help him quite a bit, you know, because he knows, he, he knows that he knows everything that there is to know about it. And so, you know, by creating those assets and having those assets out there and really doing it right with YouTube and, 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 you know, this is, again, this is something that Levi has a done for you process for, I would, I would be spending that money on that. And I would be doing those videos because I know I would look up 12 months from now and I would have a consistent flow of probably three, four, five buyers a month or you know, come into me. Um, and then I would next, next thing I would reinvest back on top of is then I would start becoming the most known by direct mailing all those same homeowners that live on the lake so that I'm starting to take over that listing business and becoming known as that, as that go-to agent for every, every homeowner that's in, in those communities around the lake. So like, that's, that, that's my, my long winded answer to, to the, um, where I would, where, what I would do going, you know, going into even, it doesn't matter this market, good market, bad market. I, I mean, I think it's better being that the market's starting to shift. I think you got a better chance to, um, you know, to, to pick up more business. Mm -hmm. I think that's a brilliant answer. Thank uh, you. I didn't even know where we didn't plan that. We, I just, <laughs> I, I threw you a curveball, and I knew, I knew yeah. you'd knock it out of the park. I just, John, do you have anything to add to that? That same, same question. No, I, I mean, a hundred percent. You know, going, going there. I think you, you then, you then put in. You know, it's check and sweat equity, right? So I think that's where you're kind of putting the check equity there. I think on the sweat equity side is is honing in on that area and going, you know, going full tilt off market, you know, strategy, making phone calls out in the neighborhood. You get a listing, you're doing, you know, open houses like you're just you're putting the sweat in as well on the listing side yep. because that YouTube that YouTube channel is going to generate buyer opportunities. But it also is it's also that mind share which we know if you want market share, you have to establish mind share first. So I think it's a combination. I would be writing like, like what cuz said, I'd be writing my check there and I'd yep. be putting my sweat over on the off market strategy. And here's the other thing. Reality too, is that there's a bunch of dumbass real estate agents out there. They're going to be overpricing shit. So expires are going to be coming back. So I would be, be ready for that. I would be fine tuning my skill set back to the expired side of things for sell by owners are already overpriced. So you know, you're expired for sale, cancel, withdrawn, off market skill set has is gonna it's gonna serve you well coming mm -hmm. back. So I think it's a combination of of those yeah. two. I think it's it's gonna be it's gonna be this and that. Um, it's not gonna be one thing. As we know, right? There's no one, there's no silver bullet. But I like the check equity over on the YouTube a hundred percent. I'd be putting all my chips there. And then where I'm put, spending my sweat and my time is 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 going after the listings. Yep, yep. Brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, you, you reminded me of something, John, with that is that with the expireds and, you know, with, with Jay's talking about putting that good, relevant YouTube uh, content out there. And because the shift is coming and a lot of you might be thinking, well, what what do I shoot? What kind of content? I agree, Levi. I'm about halfway through Le Levi's course myself. It's spot on. It's great. Um, I have my videographer, he's taking, he's going through it as well, but knowing this shift is coming and knowing like what John, you, you said with expireds are going to start coming again. I think this is the excellent opportunity. If you have not gone through the CHSA, CHBA courses to go through them. And if you've already gone through them, it's a good opportunity to go through them again, because that's, that's even more content. The best one of the best marketing things I ever did, and I'm not telling anybody to go out and do this, but when I did Mimi's magazine, I would just do a version of what I did in Mimi's on YouTube. And a lot of that was the principles. All I did was take your listing presentation, the CHSA, and I broke that into tiny pieces of content, not tiny pieces. I actually took the tiny pieces and made them into 
you know, a, a full fledged uh, one page article, an info article, if you will, that was a sales letter really is what it was. And you can just take that and there's just so much you'll never run out. Um, mm-hmm. and, and right now, the sellers need to be educated on what's what's going to be coming right now because everybody's got an opinion, but it's the people that are in this group, Honey Badger Nation, that's been there. They they lived through 08, 09, 2010, right? And, um, and I'm not here predicting that it's going to be that way. I've heard people saying it's going to be worse than that. I've heard people say it's not. I, I don't know. I don't have that crystal ball, but I know it's coming. And there are going to be more expired opportunities but um, that's where I'm at. I'm with you, Jay. I'm 100% YouTube strategy. Um, and I, I would say this. If anybody was looking to um, – if you are somebody who's thinking of starting a team and you haven't yet, um, you know, it, it's real tough. <laughs> when we started our teams, it, it was a normal market. And there was a lot of buyer opportunities. And you could close buyer deals like, like crazy. And so this is a good opportunity to bring on a good buyer's agent because there's going to be a lot more of those opportunities. If you can help create them. Uh, and then that way you can, you can now focus on the listing side of things. If you got a good one or two good buyer's agents. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. I think too, um, you know, not forgetting, um, starting to build those connections, right? Not, not losing touch with the people that know you, like you, love you, trust you yep. and, and really pouring into them. What is your communication? Uh, you know, cause I'll never forget, you know, Dan Kennedy 101, right? It doesn't matter how many people you have in your database. It only matters how many you're proactively communicating within your database that matters. Yep. So you can tell me that you have a database of 10,000. My question is great. Well, how many of those are you proactively communicating with on a consistent monthly, weekly, you know, uh, basis, not only, not only just professionally relevant, but personally relevant as well. And what we mean by that for you guys listening in, when you break those two things apart is that, um, professionally relevant is, is market market updates, market conditions, what's going on, you know, 30,000, 10,000, 5,000, you know, right in within their neighborhood, but personally relevant is, is where you make the connection and, you know, in times and, But we have to understand all as human beings is that when negative emotion goes up, understanding and trust goes down. And so we also understand that everybody comes to us, you know, um, lost, confused and insecure. And our job as as a true expert is to be able to, you know, give them clarity and then give them confidence in what they need to do in their home. Um, You know, their, their, their real estate, their home buying, selling decisions. And that's all done because we're, we're giving them greater understanding and we're building trust. And that's where that negative emotion comes down. And then they're open to be receptive to us. And um, I, I forget, um, man, I, I can't f- forget the gentleman's name. Uh, Brian, uh, uh, what was it? Brian Day, all day. Um, God dang, I, he's got a cool little way he kind of runs with his name. But anyways, we were talking about this because he's out in um, San Diego and he does a bunch of flips. And what he, I had him on expert mentors and what he was talking about was, Oh, cause pulling up the goods. Oh, go, okay. Hold on. Yeah. Um, right. Let me finish this real quick. Um, and, and, you know, he runs, he runs, you know, in San Diego with all the flips and everything, they run kind of their own iBuyer platform, right. To, to find the opportunities. And, and what he said was, um, no matter what happens, and this has always kind of stuck with me, and it's true, is no matter what happens, no matter how much disruption with technology, no matter where the market goes, it'll always come down to a decision of trust. And so you've got to be thinking, man, how am I building trust within like that niche in my community in, you know, just constantly focused on how am I adding value and, and, you know, giving people understanding and continuing to build trust I think no matter what the market does, if you focus on that, you'll win. Mm-hmm. All right, cuz I know you're pulling some goods up here. This is, a, uh, oh, this is an oldie but a goodie. <clears throat> so, so this is the lifetime value meter, and you know across the top you look at you know your customers. These are the people that have done business with you once, and you got your client or your customers. You know, one-time transaction. You know, repeat the people that come back to you, but maybe they've never referred to you, and then your advocates which is, you know, they send you referrals occasionally. And then you've got those people that are your champions out there 
you know, out there stopping people in the streets to tell them about you. Yeah. And, and you know, this is, you know, this is given an example of, you know, so, Cause let me, let me give some, some context real quick on champion. So if you guys have followed any of our stuff and you talk about us, when we, when you hear us talk about raving fans, what, that was our champions. Those are our raving yeah. fans. So I just want to give right. some, some context as you walk through this. Yep. Yep. And so, um, you know, what typically happens in an agent's business in that second, you know, the second line here is, you know, they're, they're, they don't have a value proposition. They're not differentiated at all from the average agent. Um, and as you move, you know, further and further along, you're, you're, you know, if you're creating champions, then you, you have exclusive differentiation, but the, the one-to-one -one marketing is so like, this is, you know, what you were talking about, John, with like, who are you staying in contact with and what is mm -hmm. your database? You know, the data, your database, it, it should be the most valuable thing that you have. If, if you're, if you have people that are sending you referrals consistently, you should be marketing to them one-to-one. -one. If they're, you know, if, there, if there's advocates, you want to be segmenting those advocates and, you know, target marketing them specifically being professionally relevant and personally relevant, right? Meaning something specific to them that's personal. Like if they like golf, you're sharing things with them about golf or whatever the case may be. And, and then, um, you know, always, always professionally relevant, which is, you know, market statistics, data, positioning you as the expert, giving them, you know, valuable knowledge around real estate so they don't just think of you as personal they think of you as the expert <clears throat> but you know that's the the lifetime value business model is is you know what you're building it's not you know it's not just about getting clients it's about it's about building a system for how um you know how how you're building value in in your database and how you're doing that through your communication and consistency um and that's what drives ultimately drives the business if you're not turning everyone into raving fans and that's not the goal that you're, you're leaving money on the table. And this was just kind of a cool example from one of our mentors of years past. Yeah. And <clears throat> what I want, you know, people, you know, we're all looking to build assets, right. Within the business, you know, documented operating procedures that prove results, right. Those are, those are assets. <clears throat> people are like, well, I have my database, right. Okay. That's fine. But if it's not segmented, and and broken apart that way to where you have the consistency to where it's predictably returning opportunities for you because it's segmented and it's communicated that way <clears throat> and it's not worth anything mm. it's maybe worth <clears throat> it's maybe it's worth a handful you know i'll pay you a referral fee for the next 12 months for anything that comes out of your database that's about all it's worth and and so if you're looking to you know make sure no matter what you're doing with your bills business and, and trying to maximize you know the assets that you have then you've got to take that database serious and like right now i mean golden opportunity i mean we're we're throwing nuggets at everybody i hope they're taking notes because i mean it's the youtube strategy and it's what coach talks about right what are the four or five strategies that you have that's going to withstand any market mm -hmm. moving into the second half of the year i mean we gave you the youtube strategy the chsa chba off-market strategies expires cancels withdrawns the database the niche i mean shit, we threw seven seven strategies that are proven in any market conditions if if people will just take note and execute Indeed. that kind of leads us into our uh you know last six months if if you had a proven repeatable strategy and system for following up on the people who already raised their hands the people who you've already built trust with, but you still got to follow up with them. How many more deals could you do? How many more agents could you, you, you sponsor and bring aboard? And that's what we're doing with a million dollar follow-up starting Thursday. Uh, is, is uh, Holly, uh, if Holly's on here, could you uh, post the link Holly into the comment section? Because uh, we have, a, we have a couple hundred people already signed up. We'd like to get a couple hundred more uh, between yeah. now and Thursday because, it's this is truly and, and i'm not saying this in a way to say that you know nothing else we've done in the past is helpful but i believe this is would probably be the biggest impactful thing that that you can make sure that you have as another strategy in good markets bad markets any markets this is just something that you're in a sales business and you need a system for follow-up so that money's not going to slip through the cracks or consistently slip through the cracks because I know 100 zero I've dropped the ball on follow-up I don't know about you guys yeah um, and I know that it's probably like if you get 
if I were to actually go back 20, this August, I think I'll have my license 24 years or something crazy. If I were to go back and I would have said, if I had a follow-up system, I know for a fact we're talking seven figures that's fallen through the cracks, maybe multiple seven figures. And so uh, make sure you're signed up for that if you haven't. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, ninety-seven bucks for four yeah, sessions with Coach. Get out of here. Yeah, it's going to be out of here. Amazing. I mean, that dude, we've we've been with Coach right now almost a year. Think about this: the growth in all three of our lives, not only the lives that's that's cascaded down from from us being in the room with him at the Sprint in Nashville. He's changed my life. Yeah. Yep. Hundred percent. He's changed my life, and you get ninety-seven bucks for four sessions with Coach. Like I would be afraid to tell somebody that I didn't invest in that. I'd be embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would. Yeah. Be, I would be embarrassed as well. If you're if you're a team leader out there, you need to get your whole team on this. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, especially if you're if you have agents you've attracted to the company and you're not you're not knocking on the door to get them in this yeah. uh, you're missing out on an opportunity to, to build the passive yeah. income as well as get them into production get them from fla to flqa um all, all of these uh this is probably the the most timely uh message and, and content that we could all have really you know what fellas you know what i love about it you know definitely going through the follow-up you know, a year ago, right? Starting got diving in, going through his, you know, his six key foundational, you know, pillars, but how it's evolved, right? And over the year and just kind of what he talked to us about in Orlando, it's not just following up with clients, but it's following up with ideas. It's following up with dreams. It's following up with, you know, just, it's just following up with everything in our lives. And that's, you know, what I love about coach. Yeah. We're going to learn how to, how to better follow up with agents, better follow up with clients. But just a framework. And that's what we kick this call off with, man. We all need a great framework to make better decisions. But yet we make those decisions. How do we follow up on those decisions? And it's gold. Yeah. And, and, and this is, I don't know if this is going to be touched on, but this is something that I learned from Mike, Jay, you, John, um, when I was a client of Kinder East Coaching. And the follow-up that I, not just the follow-up, but the support, you know, this kind of, it, it goes in, into the, it crosses over into the surprise and delight, the whole um, raving, we're talking about raving fans and how you, you gift them differently. You wouldn't send the same follow-up to someone who sends you six or seven referrals a year as you would, you know what I mean? Someone who's maybe done one deal with you or whatever. And, right. um, and it goes back to that segmentation, but I, I follow, you know, look, if, if I've been working with, agents who are not over yet for several several years and when they have a new baby i'm i'm sending them something that's relevant to you know their their baby girl that they just had or whatever you know what i mean like they're getting a they're getting they're gonna get a surprise and delight little gift and what is it doing it's building trust it's deepening the relationship it's it's um it's building that um that affi- the um, I can't think of the, the, the word I'm looking for um, affinity and um, and that's everything that you were just talking about at the beginning of the call Jay and John is that when 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 fear is high uncertainty is high trust is low and this is just a this is just an unfair advantage you can get over everybody because all you're doing is building relationships you're building trust but you have to be deliberate about it. You have to be, it has to be something you're aware of every single day when you're waking up. Who am I touching on? Who am I loving on? Who did I just see on Facebook that I, I've been, I would love to have on my team or bring over to EXP um, that they just had something I could just surprise and delight them with, you know? And so um, it's just something that, you know, you're going to learn all, everything that we've been doing, everything that coach has been doing, and for 97 bucks, just, just a no brainer. Absolutely. Did, did, did Holly have a chance to put that link in there? Yeah. Or? Somebody posted, somebody posted the, the link in there. Um, okay, cool. I know we're, we're, we're dropping into a couple of different groups. So um, I'll find the message, Antonio, make sure it's there. Um, Rob. Awesome. Ricky. Uh, 
Kevin, 87 Kevin answered, NAEA certified home seller buyer. If you don't have access to that course, you can email, um, I think, Holly at jkinder.com. I know for sure she'll get that. H O L L I E. Um, we had an earlier question come in around aging attraction, cuz I don't know if you want to uh, kind of address that. Yeah. Let's see. Explain to you aging attraction works for me. It's very attractive. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, yeah, so that this is, um, you know, 50%, you know, 50% of all um, money that comes into the company is paid out in revenue shares. So um, if there's a short, you know, if, if it, there's a shortfall um, in terms of how much revenue share is, is projected to be paid out in terms of the maximum payouts, then, you know, it could be deducted by, you know, as much as whatever it is, right, maybe 27%. So you know, the, the flip side of that is, is, you know, what also goes into revenue share, which now 20% was it the coaching is 20% of the coaching revenue goes directly to anybody who sponsors somebody plus what is it? Is it the 30 or 40% of it that goes into the bucket that goes in, you know, towards revenue share payouts as well as, um, uh, half the profit from the mortgage side, half the profit from the title side, all these ancillary services we get gets thrown into the revenue share bucket as well. And so there's a there's a, a time and place where that buffer might end up being twenty seven percent above what you know what it is right now. But right now it's a it's a deduction of twenty seven percent. But with all those revenue streams in place, as we continue to grow, the opportunity is that it could be we could be getting more than fifty percent of revenue share paid out, which means that that would be a plus percent. So that's the opportunity. It's the only way for us to be sustainable. I mean, at the end of the day, um, what would happen to the stock and to the company ultimately is, is if we paid an unlimited amount of revenue share and you didn't know how much money was in the company to operate the company, then you wouldn't, you know, we would, you know, let's say we'd be paying 27% more out, the company would be losing money, the stock would go to zero and we would all be out of the job and we'd be looking for something new. And so you know, that was, um, you know, something that was put in place in 2017. It's called the sustainability, uh, revenue share sustainability I can't remember exactly what it was called, but that was a decision that was um, made in order to, to maintain and be sustainable. So yeah, we, we discuss it. It's a part of it. Um, you know, it's it is a you know it is a little bit of a ding right now, but I think the opportunity is for it to um, you know for it to flip and, and be back to zero at some point, or maybe even better. I think too, cause is that um, you know you always want to tie back things back to um, the core values. And that's why core values are so important in our organizations, um, but as well as understanding what the core values at EDXP, you know, what they are. And one of them is sustainability. So you have to understand that, you know, core values drive our our decision making, right? We're talking about decision making. And, and so when you look at, you know, why they do that, right? Why, why may they, you know, shift things around with, with icon, ability to earn icon. Why, why may they do this? Why may they do that? Because it's about being sustainable. It's about building a, an enduring company that can, that can last. And if you don't have, if you don't have decision-making filters in place in a, in a, in a foundation of how to behave, then you act reckless. And, and so one of the main, you know, factors for EXP, it's all about sustainability. So the decisions that leadership in the organization makes is based on that core value. And so, you know, that's like, if that doesn't excite you, then I don't, I mean, yeah. Uh, let me, let me, let me give an example. So, so, so real um, is in, a, in the unfortunate position that, that the, majority of stock is owned by the investors, which means that the, that the founder is no longer making the decisions. The board of directors is going to make decisions. Uh, I don't believe that the board of directors who are only interested in the value in the stock of that company are going to make the decision that's best for the agent every single time. I don't believe that. Um, and so th there will be changes coming because that company is not profitable and it has a ton of debt. So they may not make it. You know, I think there's a really good chance that, that that real doesn't make it because nobody wants to touch it with a 10 foot pole right now in terms of investors putting money into it. And so 
you know, we're, we're cash, we're, we're, we're sitting on a pile of cash. We own our technology and, and we don't have any debt. And Glenn Sanford is, is the steward of the ship and he is making his decisions, running them through the filter of, is this better for the agent? Is this better for the agent? That's a completely different um, position to be in than, than what some other companies are. And so you gotta, you know, you, you gotta understand the, all the pieces to the puzzle to understand why certain things are done a certain way, but that's, it's all for the, it's all, if the company doesn't survive, it's the golden goose. We, none of us, we all go somewhere else and the opportunity you know, is not the same anywhere else. And so, you know, you know look at it this way. Maybe, go ahead. You know what made me just think about it? What? <laughs> yeah. Terms of endearment. Yep. Great book. Break is, it breaks it down right there, right? Glenn's making decisions enduring companies make decisions on the values what's best right. for the agent what's sustainable like you just just run it through those filters yep. and it's like why why will why will some companies survive and why some companies won't right and you know and the, the the reality is is that okay. if you're telling me that all i can make is a million dollars a month in passive income i i would have i not i wouldn't have made a different decision to join <laughs> i mean <laughs> You know, at the end of the day, if that's all I can make is probably maybe it, maybe it caps out at a million, a million two a month. I'm not sure. I know people that are getting close to those numbers. Um, is that going to change my decision as far as you know joining this company? And the answer is no, absolutely not, because no one else is, has you know any kind of opportunity anywhere close to that. So, um, yeah, that's long long winded answers, but I think I, I just want to I, I, I want to piggyback on that because the other decision I was super impressed um, at shareholders. And it was, it, this has been a reoccurring thing. If, if you've been going to events, you haven't been going to events, get your ass to events, especially when Glenn's, Glenn's going to speak and Jeff Whiteside and pay attention when Jeff Whiteside speaks, because the other filter that they make their decisions through John is the M, uh, MPS score, right? Is it, yep. am I saying that right? The net MPS promoter score. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Net promoter score. And, they're making those, they're making shifts. They're, 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 they're being agile based upon those scores. In other words, and they pay attention to those things like, like every day. And if they see a tweak in their, you know, let's say a number goes down here and this, whatever, they address it head on, you know, they, they attack it head on and they know exactly where it's at because they're paying attention. And we have really, really, really great net promoter scores if you were to compare it to other publicly traded companies, ours are off the charts. So I just wanted to add that to what you were saying. And I was curious, John, in that book, um, if, if they mentioned net promoter scores in that endearment book that you were just talking about. Uh, I don't, I don't recall. Um, you know, we did all of the work with um, the ultimate question, the ultimate question 2.0 Bain and associates, this, the, the study and, you know, when you put that metric in, it changes the behavior of everybody in the organization. I, I would say, I would say compensation, and then I would say your net promoter score would be two critical, you know, critical metrics to pay attention to. If your model, you know, do you have those dialed in correctly in your model? And and so, if you don't have some type of of, because it, it's a feedback loop, and and I think you know, out whatever what, what you're saying, and it goes back to and you said another core value for for EXP it was agile. And it allows them to to make shifts and move, you know. I mean, this ain't. I mean, they move this shit. I mean, you might feel like this is the Titan. This ain't the Titanic. <laughs> they can make they can make some moves pretty quick. Um, I forget, you know, the success coaching that came together. What in like six, seven, eight weeks? I mean, that thing came together. I mean, that's that's agile. Like, tell me another company that this that's this size that can make the decisions and moves that fast. Yeah, and by the way, that's already catching the attention of some some big uh maps coaches um i've i've already been on a three-way call with them with someone who's like been kw through and through big map master maps coach and um and when they saw success coaching coming over i mean they're they're coming you know so just keep that in mind with uh any coaches that you know out there yeah yeah absolutely yeah it um you know, I just I remember, you know, when we when we implemented net promoter score in the Lawton office, mm -hmm. I mean, how I mean, people fought for those numbers to be up. 
I mean, they, you know, they take pride in that. They didn't want to be the person that brought the company's number down and it just, it changes behavior. Right. And I think it's, it's having those feedback loops. It's having that, that level of accountability, right? That one metric changed the entire accountability in our organization just by implementing one number. You know, what's real, real interesting. It's probably one of the easiest things to, uh, to get, to get out. It's a one, it's a, it's a one question survey. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, for what we're talking about, guys, um, it's a study that Bain and Associates put out. It's what they found to be the only true indicator if somebody's going to refer or do business with you again. And it's real simple. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being absolute, how likely are you to refer a friend, family member, or colleague to do business with us? You're looking for 9s and 10s, um, which are your promoters. Um, your 7s and 8s are your passes, and your 6 and below are detractors. And how you get your, your score is um, a percentage of your promoters minus the percentage of your detractors gives your net promoter score. So if companies are running around a 70, that would mean that they've got, um, you know, uh, 30% minus whatever their promoters, that would, which would land around the 70. So they definitely have more promoters than detractors and obviously more, more passives. So typically what you'll start to see is you'll start to see your nines and tens will become sevens and eights, but then they'll start to drop down to the six and below. Yeah, look at Rob's, Rob's, Rob, uh, exactly. So it real slowly will slowly screw its agents eventually, just like Compass is, and they are. Um, uh, Compass has closed an office in San Francisco. I didn't know that. They've closed eight nationwide wow. and they're cutting staff. I saw that. Um, managers and commissions. NPS scores for both companies are about 70. I'd like to see uh, Compass's next NPS score. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt that it will be anywhere close to that. So here's, here's, here's the kind of thoughts as, as we kind of put a, put a bow on this conversation. If you believe they're all coming, then, then why would you ever stop following up with them? Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if you don't have a solid follow-up process in place, like – you know, I wasn't joking earlier when I would be embarrassed to tell somebody that I didn't take up the $97 coach bird offer. Right. How serious are you? How serious are you? You know, I asked, you know, when I did presentation at shareholders, I, I asked um, everybody, I said, who wants to grow their business? Everybody in the room raised their hand. And then, you know, I, I you know, I had the growth score assessment. I let them, you know, I was like, you know, what's going to be, I said, here's the thing. Every one of you raised your hand in here, but yet I promise you there will be only maybe 25 people that will actually follow through. 28. Yep. 28. And there were what, Al? Several hundred in the room? There were, there were 200, I believe, we, we, we yeah. packed into that room. <laughs> so, um, yeah, how serious are you guys? You know, how serious are you guys? Coach was giving away a, a book to anybody that's, that followed up. And he had almost 200 books there. Yeah, that was What's different. That was, that was coach. That was, a, that was a room full of honey badgers. I was talking about when I – on my presentation. Gotcha. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about coaches. No. Uh, Over, that was they, a room full oh, of honey badgers. My bad. My bad. <laughs> my bad. What are you badgers. talking about? That changes the odds. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. My bad. Um, well, just one thing. I, I want to uh, – we're going to get our hands on – a pretty amazing presentation that I think John, I, don't, I think you said in on it. It was at shareholders. It was Chuck Fazio. He did a panel of indie brokers that all brought their brokerages over fire, fire, absolute fire. And it's only like maybe 20 minutes long or something. Um, Garrett got it on video, but he didn't get the beginning. I don't think. And um, he's working on it to see, but, I think Chuck has a can get a better version of it. That needs to go in our app. It's fire. That is a, a video that um, really digs into everyone on there had successful indie brokerages, all different sizes. And um, and I guess here's another. This is more of an announcement than anything else. But Chuck Fazio has taken a position with EXP Corporate to um, to help you bring independent brokerages over because they are going to be hurting in this. The downturn that's coming over the next 24 months, you're going to see independent brokerages hurting. Yep. And uh, and and we are their we are their uh, their lifeboat. We're their. You know, 
what's what's awesome with that Al, is that I've already had a couple of people tell me they've had they've had Chuck on the phone and game changer game changer for him. So like it's already happening and so you know Chuck's a honey badger, right? Take advantage of Chuck, take advantage of Al, take advantage of me, take advantage of Cuz. You know, the number one metric when we were growing early on is how many who was in Jay's calendar the most. That was the, that was the number one indicator that I paid attention to, and I would always look. And I'd be like, I know who's about to blow up. Yep. Yep. 100%. Facts. 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 All right, Facts. fellas. I Rob, appreciate Rob, y'all. Rob, thank you, Rob, for dropping that nugget. Yeah, I'm on Mike Del Preet's, uh newsletter. I get all his emails and updates, and that's some of the best content I've seen. Um, and I must have missed – maybe I missed one. that was breaks. News on Compass, it, but, by the way. Yeah. MikeDP.com. I got it. Uh, yep. It's it's the best um, kind of unbiased analysis I've seen being put out. Subscribe to it? Yeah. Got it. On it. All right. Appreciate you all guys, man. Love you both. Yep, yep. You guys had a great fourth. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.